Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Jerry Neesman of the Neesman team at Keller Williams Realty in Southwest Florida. And with me is my good friend, Carlos Pulido. He's here, uh, we're actually here in Miami in, uh, in his office and uh, putting together an investor workshop, as you can see. And we thought it'd be a good idea to record it and kind of talk through uh, what we're gonna go over in the workshop so that uh, you know any of our followers online can be able to uh, get the information as well. So, Carlos, tell us about yourself. Um, Carlos Pulido, born and raised in Colombia. I've uh, been in Miami since 1999. Love this place. Uh, I love the, the culture and, you know, we call Miami the melting pot. So, you find a little bit of everyone here and I'm just very proud of our city and everything that it has to offer and very excited to talk to some uh, investors today. Yeah, absolutely. So, Carlos and I work with investors all the time. Uh, we're both together in the, the Keller Williams Sports and Entertainment Division together. And he covers South Florida, so the Miami kind of what for you go to Fort Lauderdale too? Yes, uh, so the the Florida Keys, Miami Dade, which is my main um, territory, and Broward County as well. So, and then of course everybody that knows us, we cover all of Southwest Florida. So basically, just as far north as he goes, and as far south as we get on the West Coast, so Sarasota, Bradenton, uh, Lakewood Ranch area, down to. Naples and Marco Island and then of course Fort Myers in between and all the the islands up the the Gulf Coast as well And the beautiful thing about Kelly Williams and Kelly Williams sports and entertainment is that these are the areas that we personally cover But if somebody wants to make an investment outside of, of you know, South Florida outside of Florida We definitely got people all over the country all over the country that can help us out. Yep Yeah, we connect with uh, with the top agents all over the world actually. So yeah. I mean we've we've helped people do deals in Canada in the uh, in the Caribbean, Colombia. Um, <laughs> there you go. So we can we pretty much connect you with somebody anywhere you want to go. So just you know let us know how we can help. Correct. Um, all right. So talking about investment properties today, and uh, you know kind of intro to uh, to investing and how to get people into investing, or if you you're already in it, need a little bit of help, or looking for you know for a good realtor to help you in that process. You know, one of the biggest things that we're going to get into is building your team of people that help you out throughout this process. Because anybody that's super successful, they never do it on their own. Right. All right. So, Carlos, you know, we got in the workshop, we're going to talk about terms and we'll throw this in the video, the list of terms and the definitions and, and uh, what they all say. So the first thing that, that people tend to ask is how risky is real estate investing? Like for somebody, especially that's new, that's not, not super familiar with it. It seems like it's really risky, right? What, I mean, what's your take on that? What, what kind of risk have you seen? What's, <clears throat> well, I think to start off with any type of investment is risky, right? Especially if you don't know what you're doing or you haven't done your homework. Uh, but it's also risky not to do any type of investment because the money sitting down is not going to do anything at all. If actually, with inflation, you're losing money if you're not doing anything with it, right? So I think it's about surrounding yourself with the right team and, again, just doing your homework. Uh, but, yeah, there's risk in everything. So I think the more prepared you are, the less risk that you have. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, when I talk to people about this, yes, it feels risky. It seems risky because you're putting money out there in something when you're new, it's something that you're not super familiar with. But the point is, if you surround yourself with people that know what they're doing, it reduces a lot of that risk. And if you get the education and do the research, it's not really risky. You don't run into major risk in real estate investing. It's actually one of the safest investments you can make. It's not um, Bitcoin, for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's one of the safest investments and most lucrative Right. safe investments that you can possibly make where you can get really good returns and you can minimize the risk pretty significantly the the way you you know the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to make your money going in so you make your money when you buy the property right so you buy value and then there's very little risk and then also we teach you how to set you up like how to set yourself up with multiple exit strategies Correct. So not just like, oh, I'm going into this as a fix and flip and I have to sell it to get out. 
it's, oh, I'm gonna go into it with the plan of it being a fix and flip, and so we're gonna wanna sell it to get out, but what happens if something changes in the market while we're in the middle of doing repairs? They take longer than expected, whatever. What else can I do with the property? Can I turn it into a rental and get positive cash flow? Can I refinance it and pull my cash back out? Like what, there's a lot of different options and ways that you can go about that to really help reduce and minimize that, that risk of actual, you know, any real actual loss in the short term. And I think that's, that's a key word that you mentioned, it gives you options. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, people feel more comfortable a certain way, going a different route. So it gives you the options to find, I think that's a beautiful thing about real estate. You can find the, the way that you like to do business and that it works for you. And what works for you might not work for the next person, right? But it gives you the option to, to find different ways to go about it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so the next question we run into a lot, what are the potential roadblocks? What are, what are the, the biggest issues that people run into trying to get into real estate investing or once they're already in? What, what's the most common things that... I think the money. Having okay. the money, right? I think a lot of people come to me and they tell me, well, you know, I don't have thousands of dollars available to, to get into real estate investing. And uh, what a lot of them don't know is that there's different ways to go about it, right? Uh, we have what we call other people's money, uh, which is a vehicle that a lot of people, especially starting off, are uh, using. There is financing options available for investors. Yeah, they all have their requirements and, and whatnot, but even if you don't have a lot of money at your disposal at first, uh, there's ways that you could get into the game. Yeah, absolutely. You can partner with other people that may have the money. The number one thing that I see with people that say, I don't know where to get the money, the reality is, you don't have anything yet to offer the people that have the money. Right. Go find the deal. And if you find a good deal, money will find you. Yep. 100%. Like find a really good deal and start talking to people about it. And those people will either have the money or they will connect you with people with the money. We were talking about this. Uh, my wife, Rachel, and I were talking a little bit driving over here. And she asked me this question and I said, if you find a deal, money will find you. And she says, what about people that don't know where the money is, that don't know anybody with money? Talk to people. If yeah, you go out and work. talk to people, if you find a really good deal, people with money will find you. My you talk about it. There's sometimes people, with, and this is another pro, out of the rubble, but there's people that have the money and don't have the time or, or know how to find the deals. Right. If you could so bring the deal you. to the table. Right, exactly. So, you know, you could approach somebody, family members, whatever. Hey, listen, I'm finding the deal. Can you finance it? And we'll split it and right. we'll, we'll get into that. Right. Find the deal and call us and we'll connect you with people that got the money. 100%. 100%. <laughs> um, the thing that I find is, you know, when people, they have the money and, and they have the, they find the deal and they buy a property and then they don't have buyers for the property. And I know that that sounds crazy right now, the type of market that we're in, there's, <laughs> there's buyers everywhere. But it wasn't always like this, right? And it's not always gonna be like this. So um, I do find people that, that come up to me and say, look, I don't wanna put all this money, buy a property, and then I'm stuck with it. So I hear that as well. Sure, yeah, and that's what I was talking about earlier too, is exit strategies, having multiple exit strategies. Right. So it's not just, I'm gonna buy the property, I'm gonna put this money into fixing it up, and then I need to be able to sell it. No, you don't necessarily need to sell it. You would like to sell it, but could you get the money back out in another way? Right. You know, can we connect you with a lender that can hook you up and do a cash out refinance? Maybe you paid cash for the property and you bought it and now you want to pull your cash out or you put a down payment in, but you bought it at a low, you know, low price and now you fixed it up and now it's worth a lot more and you can pull that equity back out, get you all or most of your cash back that you put in, in the repairs and the down payment. And now you can go buy another one and you have this one with a positive cash flowing mortgage right. and you put renters in it. Like there's, there are so many different options, so many ways to get you out of a property um, or get you your money back out of the property that you put into it safely so that you can manage it in a way that it makes sense and, and you know, just have backup plans. That's the point. A backup plan for your backup plan too. Right. right. Plan, plan B, plan C. <laughs> and then you also mentioned earlier, you know, surround yourself with the right team. You buy a property, you put the money to the property, you want to be able to sell the property, make sure that you hire a good real estate agent that is going to be able to sell that property for you uh, fast for the most amount of money and with the least amount of stress possible. 
Right. And then, you know, you got to, as part of your team, you're going to want probably a lender. You're going to want probably a title company. You're going to want a handyman or contractors, plumbers, electricians, painters, flooring people. Right. Like, you could need just about everybody that you could possibly think of. And it, right now it might sound like, oh man, that's a lot of people to put together. All you really need to do is find one or two and they will put you in contact with other people that they know in the business. Right. Yep. So it's all about starting out with those key people that you need to help you get the property first. And then those people can usually connect you with the people that can do the other stuff. And, and can, I, can I add on to that too? It's fun. Like, I know it's, oh, it's kind of fun. It's nervous when you're first getting started. Well, but when you get the ball rolling and you see a house and you fix it and you go, you know, you, you buy the stuff or you hire somebody and, and you see the house, how, how it's changed. The whole process, um, yeah, it could be nerve wracking when you're starting with, but it, it's fun. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Any other roadblocks that, that your clients run into? I think once they get in uh, ahead in the, in the process, uh, you need to make sure that you have uh, the systems, tools, and people in place to help you. Um, because you know, you're know doing one flip or, or, or one investment long-term, when you're doing it by yourself, the first one is you know, you do one deal at a time, it's okay. When you're doing two deals, three deals, four deals at a time, you wanna make sure that you have systems, tools, and people in place that you can leverage on and help the process be a little more, more smooth for you. Right, so that's gonna help you then multiply your efforts so instead of just adding like okay here's one well now i gotta now i add another one right you can start to once you've got those systems and processes in place you can start to multiply exponentially how many properties you do so that's like we talked about it's just it's all about building out that team right like the first deal you want to yourself go and paint the house which i find a lot of people do i i, I did it myself oh, I hate that's painting. well that, but, <laughs> right but i'm talking about the first deal but when right. you have again two three multiple deals a month you need to hire somebody that even if you would like to do it trust me you're going to be saving a lot more and time time that you could use to find other deals right when you leverage out and you hire people to take care of all of this for you yep absolutely all right so let's see what's next what are the what are the advantages of investing here in South Florida in the you know Miami area? What 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 are the biggest reasons that your clients like to invest in this area? Um, a couple of things, right? So when I have clients that are investing for the first time, I always recommend, and all we could do is give our recommendations. Sure. The, 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 the clients always have the hand on the drive. Um, I, I recommend to people to do an investment in a location that is our arms reach. Somewhere that okay. is close to you, right? Because it's your first one. You want to make sure that you'll be able to attend to it. Um, and then as you get more experience, that you can expand and, and you know invest in different places. Um, so I always tell people, the clients from Miami, to start investing in Miami. Uh, second of that, it's Miami, like right. It's a place where a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people want to be in. Right? Yeah. A lot of people want to travel. It's it's, it's uh, you know the tourism is great here. So. I think no matter what type of investment you want to do, whether you want to flip or have a, a location for long-term rentals or Airbnb, which is huge down here, uh, I think it's a great location for it. Uh, taxes are great, mm -hmm. right? We, we, we don't pay the taxes that other places do. No state um, income tax. No state income tax. Um, and it's a beautiful place and you don't have to worry about certain things that could damage your investment. Um, like, you know, we have hurricanes here in, in, in Miami, right? But for hurricanes, you have plenty of time to prepare and get ready. We, we do hurricane parties down here. That's, <laughs> that, that, that's what we do. But like, I could imagine somewhere where, you know, oh, it's a tornado coming. Like, I'll panic in the middle of a tornado. Well, yeah. You, I was going to say, like, my wife's from the Midwest, from, right. you know, from, from Chicago. Right. And, uh, you know, you get like five minutes to prepare to to like basically run and hide like what are you gonna do right here we got days notice now yeah it can shift a little bit like you know irma was supposed to hit miami and then shifted over to the west coast and we got it over there sorry and you know <laughs> it, but it at the end of the day we still knew it was coming i mean right. we left we booked a flight and left uh when it, i think what it hit on a friday i think and we flew out on like Tuesday because we saw it was shifting, 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 yeah, and then get out of the here. projections. So we just left. You know, I mean, it's you take a vacation. Yeah, we just drive to uh, Orlando. Right. Whenever, whenever it's a hurricane. Right. But, but I think I think that's something. You know, we don't have we have zero snow. So so those are beautiful things about Miami. I, I do have a couple of things that I want to mention, and I want to make sure that that I got it correct. So you know, 
uh, unlike most places, Miami's real estate market has been proven uh, a proven reputation for being consistent, right? The, the real estate market here is, you know, always continues to grow. Um, you know, for the past 10 years, Miami's real estate appreciation rate has been, you know, abro above average. Um, you know, here it's about, you know, 5.4% uh, that, you know, the, the value of the homes goes up every year. Last 12 months is, is, <laughs> is something I was going to say, like the last two years has uh, been a little higher than that. 90%, but... I would say. <laughs> so I have clients that purchase, you know, uh, around 2019, early 2020, and they already made a lot of uh, equity on their homes. They're already looking for, for the second uh, home to, to put some money on. So, yeah, Miami is just a great place to, to come and visit. And I do have people that invest from outside of Miami. They buy a property here, put it on Airbnb, and whenever they want to come and enjoy Miami, they have a place right. already waiting for them. And when they're not, the place is making money for them. Exactly. Paid for vacation home. Paid for vacation home. Yeah, so, somebody else is paying for your vacation. That sounds, that sounds like a good deal <laughs> that, to me. That's, that's the dream, right? 100%. Um, so now in terms of Southwest Florida, um, very similar. You know, um, it's just the West Coast, so we're a little bit slower pace of life uh um, which is really appealing <laughs> no it's really appealing it's really to a, a lot of people well, and it's really appealing to a lot of people that live in miami yes i one we, of them i know, <laughs> I know Marco island so yeah we get a lot of investors uh that live in the miami fort lauderdale area that they want to just like we, you just said buy a vacation home on the west coast so that they can get away it's easy to drive to it's a you know hour and a half two hour drive depending on where you're going they can just drive across the state and have a little bit, like just decompress from the, the stress of the, the work week. So they come over on the weekends and stuff, some, you know, and not every weekend, and then they rent it out the rest of the time. It's not far. No. It's two hour right. drive. Right. So, um, so it's a little bit slower pace of life if that's what you're looking for. Um, we always kind of joke that like the Miami, Fort Lauderdale area, uh, everybody is, uh, uh, the majority of the people that come here and invest from the, the United States are like the East Coast on I-95. So I-95 is the major highway through right. here. And so they just get on I-95 and go as far south as they can go. Yep. And on the West Coast, we get a lot of Midwesterners, which is why you see a little bit more, uh, you know, fun and excitement. It's like bring New York City and, and Boston and all that, bring them down to Miami. where it's warm. Right. And uh, they come down here and play, and they like to play in big parties and excitement and all that. And on the West Coast, the Midwesterners are a little bit more relaxed, like, relaxed, like the farmlands and all that of the Midwest. And right, so, 100%. So um, it's also usually, it depends on where you're going. Obviously, Naples, Sarasota are a little bit higher priced. They're probably on par with the Miami and stuff. But if you get more into the center of that area, Fort Myers, uh, Punta Gorda, Northport, Cape Coral, all that, it's a little bit less expensive. So you got a little bit lower cost of entry, which is sometimes appealing for, right. you know, when you're starting out. Right. Um, and it's still, I would say, an arm's reach. It's not as easy if you're gonna try and do it on your own if you're in this area. But more than anything, it's the same stuff. It's great vacation rentals, um, fantastic for Airbnb. Great There's weather. a lot of fantastic weather, low taxes, Still the same thing with the hurricanes. It is what it is, but you got, you know, weather anywhere. It's just a matter of how you deal with it. Um, and don't worry, we can teach you how to prepare for it and all that stuff. So it's all good. Um, I think that's a beautiful thing but, about South Florida, right? That we have a little bit of everything for everybody. Yeah. And whatever you're looking for, we, we it's here. It. Yeah. Right. As long as it's warm weather. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Um, all right. So, so where do we start? As an investor, let's say I'm new. Right. Where Where do I start? Well, I think you gotta uh, do yourself like a reality check and see where you stand at the moment, what What are your priorities, and what is it that you have to bring to the table? Again, whether it's the, the capital or, or the credit to get finance or the networking or the deals, and start building your team, right? Start contacting a, a, a professional real estate agent that you know, like, and trust, uh, and if you don't have one yet, Right here we now, go. Here we are. <laughs> uh, but I think start having this conversation and start creating, start creating what I call your mastermind. Right, your people, your your real estate agent, your tax advisor, your insurance person, the contractors, 
and and start creating a game plan and start finding out what is it that you're looking for are you looking for a property to flip are you looking for a long-term rental are you looking for an airbnb and again those plans might change as, as you start right. finding out how things work and you might start finding that something is more appealing to you than, than when you thought something else was. Like with real estate, long-term rentals, right? You deal with a family or an individual for a period of 12, 14 months, sometimes longer than that. With Airbnb, it's constantly, you know, right. different people. Um, but start creating that mastermind. I think that's what I, what I would suggest. Start contacting people and start, you know, interviewing people for 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 the right. jobs, right? Right. And and yeah, I think that will be the first step. Start creating that that group of people that's going to help you accomplish your goals. Yeah, absolutely. It's for me. I would say building that team, like figuring out who you want to work with. And when we talk about Carlos said, you know, interviewing people, like don't just pick the first person you talk to. Right. Talk to multiple people, and I, we've done this. I don't know if you if you've got this, but um, we've we've actually put together a video on questions you should ask realtors. Right. So when you're interviewing people, you should interview your realtors. Yeah. Like call Carlos and interview him, and then call me and interview me. Call other agents and interview them. Ask them questions. Ask them what their experience is. Ask them what they do. Right. Have those conversations. And then, and so, you know, we can link to that video. We'll, we'll throw it in the, the comments so you can see, but there's, we've got a video on what questions to ask to help interview, you know, help you out and get, feel comfortable with who you're working with. So start building that team. And those questions are good for everybody, a lender, a uh, contractor, you have to tweak them a little bit, of course, but, um, but they will help you with any of that. And then, but really sit down and ask yourself, what is your goal? Right. What, like, you got attracted to real estate investing for something, but what was it? Like there was something that drew you to it. There's typically a specific type, whether it's, I want to own rental properties. I want to do, you know, and long-term annual rentals, or I want to do vacation rentals. That sounds like fun. Uh, you know, a lot of people I'm, I'm working with a client right now that that's what they're doing is they want a vacation home. They're not ready to retire yet. I don't know exactly how old they are, but uh, late thirties, early forties. So they got a ways to go. They got young kids, but they live up North and they want a vacation in the warm. So they come, they want to come down here. So they want a vacation home and they're going to rent it out when they're not using it. So they're looking short-term rental. What you, but what is it that attracted you to the idea of real estate investing? Is it commercial where you want a, a commercial building and you want to put a business in there that's going to sign a 10 year lease, right? Like, and you just want to, set it and forget it. Like what, what is it that attracted you to real estate investing and start doing your research there and try to focus on the one thing. But then as you're looking at stuff like, okay, this might sound interesting or this might sound better. Well, let's talk about it and we'll explore those options, but really like narrow down what you want to focus on and try and do that, master that one and then grow Right, and but figure out what it is that you want to do. And 100% then grow because you could start doing, you know, one way of real estate investing and then, you know, do other ones as time goes on. I have a client right now. He wasn't sure about doing Airbnb on long-term rentals. Mm -hmm. And we ended up doing both. He bought a duplex. There you go. Put one, one of the units for long-term rentals, got a family there for 12 months. And the other one is doing Airbnb. And he's finding out in real time which one is more appealing to him. And I think that's, that's beautiful. That, that's that, awesome. That you have the possibility of doing that in this business. And talking about the team, like in any business, the team is going to change through time. Sure. Right? You're going to rotate certain players and that's just part of doing business. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's really cool. I've never, uh, yeah. I've never seen somebody buy a duplex. Like I talk to people all the time about buying duplexes and right. like what you refer to as house hacking. Yeah. Well, you can and live in it. You can live, live in one, one of the side units. and rent the other. Right. Duplex, and, triplex. Yeah. And you can buy it as a primary residence. You can do that up to four units yep. in, a, in a building. Right. Um, so I talk to people all the time about doing that, especially like first time buyers and that sort of thing. Like you can really set yourself up for the long term yep. doing that sort of thing. But um, well, there's a new idea I, out there. But I've, ne I've yeah. never had anybody come to me and say, like, I don't know which way to go. So I'm going to try both. So that's awesome. Yeah. There you go. Okay. See, you learned something new, even sitting right here just talking. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, all right. So any other ideas on uh, on where they should start? Any other thoughts on that before we? Yes. Start. Yes. Find a way to, to get in the game, to get your feet wet. 
Um, if you, you know, look for information anywhere, th I think real estate through the ages is a vehicle that has made people a lot of money. It's a vehicle that can help you get, you know, create generational wealth. Uh, so your kids, kids, kids can, can be, you know, good starting from, from somewhere. And it starts with one unit, it starts with one purchase. Doesn't have to be the, you know, $700,000 single family home. You could, you could flip a condo, you could flip an apartment. So I, that's what I would say, get started. Find a way, find information, create your team, and, and go out there and get the first deal done. Right, yeah, don't get caught up in information, you know, uh, analysis paralysis, which right. I have a tendency to do. <laughs> You're never gonna know like, it all. You're never gonna get all the information. Right. And I know a lot of people that go to all the seminars, read all the books, watch all the YouTube videos, and till this day have not made one deal. I've, I've got a client like that that I'm talking to now that she said, I've been looking at this stuff since the early 80s and I've still not bought an investment property. And the best way to learn <laughs> is by doing it. Right. And the experience is Get really, in it and do it. Yeah. So, so all right. Get started. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to follow us on all social media. Uh, you can find me, Carlos Pulido Realtor, everywhere. TikTok, but I don't do the dance videos. Uh, <laughs> YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Carlos Pulido Realtor and carlospulidorealtor.com. Yep, and uh, for us, it's the Neesman team in most places, or Jerry Neesman, or on TikTok, the Neesmans. I don't know, we're like, <laughs> it's just type in Neesman, N-I-E-S-M-A-N, and you'll find us probably. And you'll find uh, us, and um, if you like this video, make sure to click like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and leave a comment. Uh, have you done any type of investment before? Are you looking to do so? and any questions that you might have that you would like for uh, us to do another video on. Absolutely. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Jerry Neesman with the Neesman team at Keller Williams Realty and we are here in Miami for our South Florida Investor Workshop. Uh, myself and my partner Carlos Polito here are uh, putting on the Investor Workshop and I wanted to real quickly uh, interview one of our sponsors, Mike Molina from Gold Star Mortgage um, and just ask him a couple quick questions in terms of financing. So Mike, give us a quick rundown on you introduce yourself real quick. And yes. then, uh, so I'm Mike Molina with Gold Star Mortgage. Um, originally from Pennsylvania, I moved down to Florida about five years ago and uh, love it down here. Got in the mortgage business a little less than a year ago, but I've been in finance for 13 years. And um, you know, I got into this deal because I really love the opportunity to help people with the biggest purchase of their life. Um, you know, I'm the guy that makes the consultation and, and helps guide you know, my clients through the process and uh, you know, help them understand all the ins and outs of financing their their house. Yeah, and you said you've only, you've been in it a little less than a year, but the, I mean we've worked we've we've got clients that have worked with him. He's fantastic. He knows his stuff, uh, which is really impressive for somebody early on in the in their career. And they've got some amazing investor mortgage programs, which is the main reason that I invited him here to work with us is because some of these investor programs that he's got are just killer. I've not seen them with any other lenders that we've worked with. So yeah, it's um, awesome. Yeah. So let me ask you for uh, investors, either, you know, people that have been in it, even doing it, they may not have seen some of the stuff they may not know. I mean, you know, we learn new things every day, uh, but also for potential new investors that are looking to get into it. What are your top tips for, you know, being able to get into the investment, real estate investment game? Yeah, one of the biggest um, opportunities and, and programs that we have that's really, really popular right now is the ability to buy an investment property uh, and not take into consideration how much money you make or what other debts you have. So it's really huge for people that you know have their primary house and you know maybe they're making their mortgage payment and they want to get into investment, but they don't have a lot of wiggle room with how much money they have going out every month. Uh, we have a program that can get them approved with just based on uh, what the rent appraisal comes in at. So as long as it's one-to-one, -one, so if basically if rent, the, the appraisal says rent can, uh, you can average $3,000 a month, as long as their mortgage payment's under $3,000 a month, we can get them approved. Um, so it's a pretty amazing program and it gets some people in the door that may be scared to kind of make that jump. You know, there's an, 
official appraisal appraiser that's saying, hey, you can get this money for this property. So it makes them feel comfortable that they can do it. Right. Talk about what uh, you were mentioning earlier, a couple other, you said what, 10% down on investment properties? Yeah, so uh, if it's a second home, uh, so as long as you're gonna occupy it for 15 days out of the year, uh, we can get it done as little as 10% down. So that's a really popular one for folks that wanna, you know, if they're from the north and they wanna have a house down here and come a couple of weeks a year, and then they want a short-term rental Airbnb it out during the times they're not here, uh, 10% down, which is, uh, which is amazing. And then on an investment, pure investment property, uh, 15% down is, is the, um, the minimum number there. So that's somebody that you're gonna maybe get a year long rental on right. or just purely Airbnb. Yeah, awesome. That's really cool. Like we've talked about in the uh, in the the actual uh, the workshop video, people that want to buy a second home, like a vacation home, and rent it out to pay, you know, to to cover paying for it. Yep. Ten percent down is killer. Yeah, big, big opportunity, and you, you don't have to have a, a lot of your own money invested, you know, to start off with, which is awesome. Yeah. Anything else you want to? Add real quick for us. No, I'm excited. You know, I think if you're if you're getting into it and you're not sure, find somebody that you know, like Jerry or Carlos, that that know what they're doing and talk to them. And um, you know, just get your foot wet and figure it out, and you know, you'll learn pretty easily how to do it. So awesome. Where where can they find you? Uh, so I'm on Facebook, uh, Mortgage Mike, and you can find me on Instagram at um, Gold Star Mortgage Mike as well. So and then goldstar.com slash Mike Molina. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Yep, appreciate, appreciate you coming. And then we'll draw two more and then you can bring home 14. <laughs> First of all, again, we want to give thanks to our sponsors that make this and possible. Yes. Yes, thank you, Mortgage guys. Mike. Thank, thank you so much. Carlos Moreno from Allstate Insurance and Gilbert Moreno from Tax yes, Expert. Thank you, thank you so much, guys. Right this down is there possible is thanks to you. You're building your list of experts. Oh, yeah. Pull something. All right. Ooh. Carlos Pulido. Yes. <laughs> all right. There's seven of them in there. Oh, man. Jordan Joseph! Jordan! Hey, Jordan. Hey, Jordan. <laughs> Enjoy! Great! All right. I hope you guys face in the car. Can you take a picture with them or no? You don't sure. Can yeah. we share? Okay, awesome, thank you. Two more prizes. You gonna draw? We have Francesco and Arturo. Yes. Oh. Okay, we'll take a picture. Yes. Thank you guys for joining.